In the last couple of years, the popularity of containers has exploded, but unfortunately, so are their security risks. Most of the containers available today, in fact, are uh, vulnerable to supply chain attack because to publish them, you just need an API key. And if that key leaks, so an attacker can publish some container image that seem legit, but in fact contain malware. One of the best ways to protect us against that is to sign the container image at creation time. So the developers that receive that image can verify that in fact, that is the actual image they were supposed to receive with the actual code. Today, I'm gonna show you how we can sign our container images automatically thanks to GitHub Actions and GitHub Container Registry. And also I'm gonna announce who's the winner for the giveaway I ran last week. So keep watching for that. Hey, welcome back to Coder Day where we talk about DevOps, especially with GitHub and Azure DevOps. So about container image signing. There are a few tools out there that allow you to sign container images, but in my opinion, one of the most exciting ones is Sixtor. Sixtor is an open source security project now sponsored by the OpenSSF, the Open Software Security Foundation, which allows developers to securely build, distribute, and verify signed software artifacts. Among the other things, Sixtor contains a tool called Cosign that allows you to sign the container images. Cosign supports a variety of signing keys, such as text-based keys, cloud KMS-based keys, or even keys generated on hardware tokens, and Kubernetes secrets. And all of these can be generated directly from the tool and even allows you to add annotations to the signature as we will see in a moment. And of course, after you're done signing your images, you need to store them in a container registry which supports the signed images because not all container registries do. And in fact, even the one that do support signed images um, may or may not support all the different types of signature. But luckily for us, the GitHub Container Registry not only supports signed images, but also supports the co-signed signed images. All right, but enough talking. Let's see how this works with GitHub Actions and GitHub Container Registry. First thing you need to do is installing cosign to generate the keys. You can just go directly to the official GitHub repo, six stores slash cosign, click on releases and download the version for your operating system. As you can see, many OSs and platforms are supported. Once you've obtained the version that is right for you, you can just run it. It's also advisable to rename the executable. Like in my case, for example, it was called cosign-windows-amd64.exe, but I just rename it in cosign.exe for simplicity. Now that you have the tool, all you need to do is generating the keys. For this example, I will be generating a static text file key and with using the generate key pair command which also requires a password to sign the private key. And the password can be provided to the tool via environment variable or directly with an interactive prompt. Unfortunately, the latest version available at the moment of recording this video has a bug which makes it crash if you try to use the interactive prompt to provide a password on Windows, as you can see on screen. If you don't want to create an environment variable, then you can use PowerShell and the syntax you see on screen now with your password piped to the command and this will create for you the private and the public key files. But we can do better. As I mentioned before, I want to sign my images using GitHub Actions. So what I would have to do now is copying those keys and saving them as secrets in GitHub. Well, the tool can do this for us. For example, let's say I want to sign images in this uh, Newton slash sign containers repo. I can use the same command to create my keys in GitHub directly. First thing I need to do is creating an environment variable called GitHub token, and its values would be the personal access token with write access to your repo. Then I can use the command we have seen before to generate the keys, but this time we pass the repo as input parameter. The syntax, as you can see, is GitHub column dash dash owner dash repo name. If now we refresh the repo circuit page, we can see that the keys have been created as action secrets directly in our repo. Super cool, right? And you know what else would be really cool? If you can hit the like button below to let me, belows. If you can hit the like button below to let me know that you're enjoying this video or at least you're finding it insightful. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, just a small note here, keep in mind that uh, there have been instances in which the keys were created or the secrets were created in the GitHub repo, but their value was actually empty. So of course, in that case, the workflow will fail. If that happens to you, first of all, let me know. 
But also, if that happens to you, the workaround could be uh, either to try and regenerate those keys and see if the value is set, or worst case scenario, you can generate it uh, locally and then copy it manually as a secret in your repo. All right, now that we have our keys set up, it's time to see how we can sign our images using GitHub Actions. But before we do that, it's time for me to announce the winner to the giveaway. And the winner is... Timo. Congratulations. I will reach out to you via email to give you the prize, and I hope you enjoy it. And thanks for being part of the community, and thanks to all the other people who joined the giveaway. But let's go back to our GitHub Actions. Here we have a fairly standard Actions workflow, which just builds a Docker image and pushes it to the GitHub Container Registry. First thing we have to do is, of course, installing Cosign. For this, we can use the pre-built action. Uh, just search for Cosign, and you can find the Cosign installer. It has a couple of parameters, but they are optional and we don't need them for now. When we have it, we can use the cosign sign command to sign our image. It uses the private key for signing, and as we've seen before, it needs the cosign password to access it. Plus, of course, we have to specify the full image name with the registry name as well. As you can see, though, the command needs the key to be in a file, while we currently have it on a GitHub secret. The workaround for that is to add this task before the sign command, which reads the key from the secret and writes it to disk. I don't really like this solution, and so I would really prefer having a cosign implementation that can read the key directly from the secret, but uh, so far this is what we can do. Anyway, we can now commit and run our workflow, and after a few seconds, you'll see that the process completes and we can see that our image has been successfully signed. As I've mentioned, the step that reads the secret and writes it to a file is really workaround and it may pose some security risks, especially if you use it on self-hosted runners that are not ephemeral, so uh, files are persisted. If you use these on uh, GitHub hosted runners instead, since they are destroyed as soon as your job finishes, it should be okay, but yeah, uh, I would rather see a solution that can read directly from the secrets. In scenarios in which security is more important, like for example, enterprise scenarios, I would really recommend saving those keys in like secret managers, like the Azure Key Vault, the AWS KMS, or, or um, Ashikov Vault, for example, and uh, use that from there. Good thing is that Cosign supports reading those keys from those services directly, so we don't have to go through that workaround. Anyway, after the image has been signed, we can always verify its authenticity. We can always verify the, its authenticity using the public key that has been generated at the same time with the private key. And of course, you can share your public key with your developers or users, so they can always verify that your image is the correct one. To verify the authenticity of the image, you can use the cosign verify command, and we just need to pass to it the public key file and the name of the image we want to verify, and that's it. If, for comparison, we try to verify an image that hasn't been signed with our key, we will get this error. And this, of course, happens also if your image, even though you sign it, has been changed or modified after you upload it to the registry, so your users can always be sure that if the signature is matched, that's the actual image you push to the registry. And as we've said before, Cosign also support adding annotations in a key value format to your signature. Let's see how to do it. Let's say, for example, that I want to sign an image and also add some author metadata to it. Since I'm running this locally this time, I will need first to log in to the container registry. Then I can use the usual command Cosign sign that we've seen before, but this time, I use a dash "-a flag", which stands for annotations, to add some key value pairs to my image. In this case, I'm adding author equals color Dave, but it can be anything, and you can even add multiple values, uh, just adding more dash "-a parameters". And by the way, the error message you see on screen is not an actual error, but is more an informational message. And in fact, they will change it in one of the next versions of the tool. Anyway, after doing that, we can use the cosign verify command as we have seen before, and it will show me also the annotations I've added to my image. And the annotation feature can be quite useful. For example, if you're running the whole process in GitHub as we've seen before, you may want to add information about your repo, workflow run, etc. to your signature to make it more complete. Cosign and its process works fairly well as we have seen, but setting all up may be a little bit tricky, especially if you've never done it. 
But luckily for us, GitHub once again has made things easier for us. They have in fact integrated Cosign in their started workflow. Just go to Actions, New Workflow, and pick the Publish Docker Container Starter Workflow. As you can see, this workflow contains all we need to build and push our image, and it also has the Cosign install task with a specific version, and scrolling down, also the Cosign sign task. You may notice though that there is no key specified in here. And this is because GitHub Actions supports another tool in the SIG stored suite called Fulcio, which is a root CA that issues signing certificates from OIDC tokens, and as well as Record, a transparency log for certificates issued by Fulcio. And thanks to those two tools, you can sign your container images in Actions using the provided OIDC token without provisioning and managing your own keys. It's important to notice that when you sign your images with this keyless process, some of your data will be published to the keyword, to the keyword, some of your information will be published to the record uh, transparency log, such as your username, organization name, repo name, and uh, workflow run, etc. Now, I think this is a good thing for public repos and public, uh, publicly available images, but of course, if you're on a private repo or organizational repo, this may not be a good idea because you don't want your information to leak. And in fact, GitHub has disabled that on private repo directly. So what do you think about signing your container images? And especially doing it so with Cosign, GitHub Actions, and GitHub Container Registry? Let me know in the comment section below and also check out this video over here in which I have for you three steps to make your Docker image build faster and more performant. But that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coded Dave.